Nothing lasts forever except the earth and sky. That's a quote that I find very descriptive of this beautiful landscape here. Because as you look at these mountains, it does give you the impression that they will last forever. And they'll be, they'll be here long after we're gone. We're, our lifespan as human beings is just a twinkling of the eye. We're here today, gone tomorrow. And our children likewise, they're here and they're gone. And their children will be here and gone. And still these mountains and this sky will still remain. However, if we look at this landscape from a geologic perspective, we realize that, that this landscape is not forever. Far from it. And even the sky will not be here forever. The sky will last the longest. In three billion years or so, our sun will begin to enter its red giant stage. It will become bloated and a fierce solar wind will push our atmosphere out into space. We'll lose it. It'll be gone. This beautiful sky will be gone. And the rocks and the earth here will last even a shorter time period. This rock you see below our feet is limestone. And limestone is affected by small amounts of acid that comes in the rain. And if you notice, there's lots of pit marks here. These rocks are literally being dissolved. In about a million years, they'll be gone. Maybe a bit more. So nothing lasts forever in spite of what the poets tell us. And since these rocks will not last forever, before they are gone, let's take a look at them and see what we can learn from them. This is limestone. This is the Notch Peak Formation. This is about 515 million years ago. Or at least that's when it was laid down as mud in the ocean. Uh, we're at a kind of unusual spot here. We're on the Cambrian Ordovician border. This, this is a really very special spot, geologically speaking. Geologists recognize this location as being the best in the USA, the best spot in the USA to trace faunal zones across this Cambrian Ordovician boundary. There is no place better than right here. And uh, here, here the Cambrian, here we're standing on the very uppermost part of the Cambrian. And right over there, we see the very bottom part of the Ordovician. And it's very unusual for uh, periods to exist continuous like this one does, without interruption, without unconformities. Now let me explain a little bit of what the periods are. To geologists, periods are, are big chunks of time. So Ordovician and Cambrian are terms used to designate certain times in Earth's geologic history. And it so happens that Cambrian and Ordovician are the very first periods in the Paleozoic era, which is when life began on Earth. So this, this continuum makes this a very special spot. And that's partly why we're here. By the way, my name is Owen Nielsen. I'm from Great Basin Museum. And we're on the West Desert of Millard County, a beautiful area. Now, let's look at some of the fossils that are here. I, I don't know if you can see this one, but these are snails. And we'll have the cameraman zoom in on a better example. Uh, Now, the, the limestone tells us, the gray color tells us there's quite a bit of carbon in, in, this, in this mud before it became lithified and became stone. That tells us there was 
quite a bit of life in this this ocean sea. And we know that it was a shallow tropical sea. The reason we know that is because uh, the equator was almost straight overhead. Now the camera is looking at snails that we find in this rock. And as you can probably tell, they stand out from the rock. It's almost like they're sitting on top. And that's because the acid in the rainwater has dissolved the rock faster than the snails. And the reason that's so is because when the snails were fossilized, they were they contained more silica, which was less resistant to dissolving than the rock did. And they're really quite attractive, I think you'll have to admit. Now, uh, as I was mentioning, the equator was almost straight overhead. Some authorities believe it was off to our west a few miles. Others think it was off to the north somewhat. But at any rate, we know this was tropical. We know this was a, a tropical sea full of lots of life. Uh, lots of organisms besides snails lived here. Now, let's uh, walk over to this next little knoll over here because I think it will tell us something very important about the rocks. Now that's the same formation, but remember we're going to move from the Cambrian into the Ordovician. And that may be about a five million year time period that we're passing over. So without me saying any more, I'll meet you over there and we'll see what those rocks can tell us. Hold it. Now we've walked a couple hundred yards north of our previous location and we think we're now in the Ordovician or at least very close to it. This is still the Notch Peak Formation and these rocks are telling us something very different from over there. If you can uh, see these little round things in these rocks, those are stromatolites a very interesting little farm of cyanobacteria. And the other thing about these rocks are there are no snails. We see a lot of stromatolites, but no snails at all. Nowhere. They're nowhere to be seen. And the thing about snails is they can't handle salty conditions. If you put salt on a snail, it will die. But but stromatolites handle salty conditions very well. In fact, the few, one of the few places where stromatolites still live on Earth today is at Sharks Bay, Australia. And the reason they thrive there is because the water is extremely salty and no snails can live there. And what's going on is that the snails eat algae, stromatolites are algae. And so the snails have driven stromatolites almost to the point of extinction. So the interesting thing about this location is the rocks seem to be telling us that the water from there to here has become extremely saline. And that probably means that we're on a little bay that's somewhat confined and the fresh ocean water is no longer able to reach these, reach this mud that later became the rocks that we see. And this probably happened over maybe a five million year period, we're guessing. So, this is one of the pages of geology. This is what makes geology fun, is to look at the rocks and try to interpret the stories they tell us. Uh, one more thing about stromatolites is they go way back and originally the earth had an atmosphere that was reducing mean that it was predominantly hydrogen helium and and nitrogen but no absolutely no oxygen and the stromatolites and other cyanobacteria we think are what created earth's early oxygen by breaking down the water molecules and releasing the oxygen into the air
So stromatolites are very important, and they're really quite attractive little fossil. If you look up close, you can see that they have little concentric greens that uh, were formed by sediment filling in around the algae. We can thank these humble little organisms for making much of the oxygen that we breathe today. Now, I think I remember seeing some very large stromatolites off in that direction. And I'm going to go over there now and see if I can find them, see if they're there, and see if, uh, see if I can locate them. So thank you for your time watching our video today.